Hey guys, welcome back to episode. <laughs> welcome back to episode two. Uh, take it away, sir. So on today's episode, we're gonna be digging into Andrew's background in history. How is it that you got involved in fitness? Um, so I am pretty tall, and I graduated high school uh, at 140 pounds. I'm six foot three, so I was really, really skinny, and. Um, I had taken one semester of weights in high school and I loved it. I thought it was so cool. And, uh, you know, I remember the girl that I was dating throughout like all of high school. I remember her having like a positive reaction to me when I started building some muscle and stuff. And I was like, I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, Hey, at the end of the day, like everybody's, you know, everybody's goal kind of comes back to the underlying need to like, you know, to mate or whatever yeah. our freaking body's telling <laughs> us to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so, um, you know, my freaking, my brain was like lighting up at that attention and then uh, graduated and lost all the, I had no idea what, what to do, you know, I didn't learn anything really. They just taught me how to follow a program basically, but I had no idea what I was doing. And um, I always knew I was interested in health and fitness. I, you know, grew up watching my mom go to the gym all the time. I grew up looking at all my dad's powerlifting and bodybuilding trophies. Um, <clears throat> you know, it was one of those things where you always kind of want to be like the people that you looked up to and mom was always pretty fit and healthy. Dad was always pretty fit and healthy. And um, what it ended up coming down to was uh, I was playing music uh, for years after high school. Uh, I met um, I met this dude named Zach at shows. We started going to the gym together and then it became one of those things where I was like, well, I'm spending a lot of time here. Hmm. What do I got a job here as well? Cause you know, since at the time the goal was play music and you know, become famous and tour the world and yada yeah. yada. <laughs> um, I was like, okay, I can't get in a job that has any meaningful future. So I need to make sure it's something I don't give a shit about. And I was like, the gym is fun, but I don't give a shit about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I get a job at the front desk. I end up doing really, really well selling supplements and uh, two or three months go by and I'm like always at the top of the list. I'm always getting like the, you know, bonus checks and stuff like that. And um, there's a guy named uh, Jeff Baker. So the guy that owns our gym um, at Stimulus Reno for anyone wondering <laughs> uh, and verbatim, he walks up behind me. He clocks out and I go, uh, you are always in and out of the gym. What's your schedule? And he says, whatever I want, baby. Mm. And walks out. And I was like, I want that. So I'd only been in the gym for three months. I had no business being a trainer. But as soon as he told me that, I walked behind the desk and went and talked to, went and talked to Brandon and was like, Hey, how do I become a trainer? And you know, he <laughs> kind of gives me like the up and down and is like, uh, you can do the certification. I'm like, all right, cool. So did the cert, um, finished it in like less than a month. Cause I was, I was so excited. I was like, so pumped about it. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm going to get to make my own schedule. I'm going to make so much money. I of course then discovered that that's not the reality of being a new trainer. Like mm -hmm. it is a nonstop grind your first few years. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, they basically were just like, Hey, you're doing a really, really good job at sales. You're, you know, certified as a trainer now. What if instead of becoming a trainer, you go into sales and you sell PT and you sell this and you sell that. And I'm like, oh no, I really want to be a trainer. And they're like, they're like, yeah, yeah, you'll make so much more money being in sales. And I'm like, yeah, I really want to be a trainer. And they're like, hey, you are not going to make any money as a trainer. You should go. And I'm like, oh, fuck. All right, fine. So like, I basically got bullied into a sales position. I'm happy about it because it's been an incredible skill, but hung out there for years took a few clients on the side, ended up moving into essentially like PT management, PT sales, and um, worked on a lot of trainers, uh, like files would get to, you know, look at all the programming. Yeah, all their programming and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it was, it was cool because I kind of got a bird's eye view of a lot of uh, what works and what doesn't, you know, I got to got to see a shitload of really bad programs, um, which is kind of the reality of commercial gyms. Um, and then I remember the gym paid for something called PT on the net. And I remember there being a thing where it was like, oh, like trainer of the year award. And I was like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And then I saw on their site that, you know, you could get like continuing education credits. And I was so 
new and green in my training like world that I had no idea there were things beyond base level certification. So I was like, what? You need to be better at this? <laughs> and, um, you know, I like talked to them about it and they're like, yeah, like if you want to do these, like we will, we'll pay for them and we'll pay for you to do them. And I'm like, all right. So, you know, I start cranking out all these different CEUs and I can't even remember any of them, but you know, I start cranking them out and I'm like, this is so cool. This is so fun. And like, I ended up seeing an immediate benefit for like every client that I worked with because no matter what, I mean, if a client had a question and I didn't have an answer for it, it was never a, well, I don't know. So it must not, be, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it must not be here. Uh, it was always like, you know, I don't know, but give me a second. I would always try and come back to the next session with uh, an answer. Yeah. And you know, whether I ended up having an answer or not, I would be like, Hey, you know, I, I don't know, unfortunately. Um, but you know, I would always try and try and find that. And I ended up having a lot less, I don't knows the more that I kind of went through that. And <clears throat> this guy aged kind of poorly, um, politically or socially speaking, I wouldn't say politically, but kind of socially, he's a, a bit, a bit, uh, uh, he's kind of an edge lord with like some of the stuff that he says, but um, Elliot Hulse, I, I remember sitting in bed and every single time before I would go to bed, I would sit on my side just like this and I would watch one of his videos before I went to bed every single night. Um, and he ended up mentioning Paul Check, And I'm like, who is Paul Check?" And I look him up and I'm like, huh, this guy's a big fucking weirdo. Mm -hmm. Done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was like, uh, this guy's like literally talking about like giving energy to your water and uh -huh. like just the, the weirdest, most like odd shit. And you know, my, you know, my 20 year old brain, like less than a year of being a trainer wasn't gonna, wasn't ready for that. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. And this is also, you know, around the time that, um, I started learning about like meditation and stuff, from Brandon and <clears throat> I think just because of watching enough of Elliot's stuff, I got so much value from what he was teaching. Um, you know, and this is nearly, yeah, this is almost 10 years ago now. Um, I got so much value from his, from his YouTube stuff that I was like, okay, you know, this is the guy beneath this guy. And I was like, maybe I, whoops. <laughs> maybe it's Paul check. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like he, he had learned from Paul and I was like, I was like, okay, you know what? Let's, let's check him out. So I go look him up and he's like, oh, you know, I do this like huge certification it takes, you know, this many years. And I was like, I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. And I had only done these little CEUs and stuff. So I'm expecting, you know, 150 bucks, 300 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever. And it's like, hi, this is $15,000. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like yeah, listen here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, was like, I was like, I'm making like $15 now, right yeah. now. So I don't even think I was making that much, honestly, but, um, then I just kind of backburnered that, you know, I kept getting various certifications. I kept reading, I kept studying. I, I, I love reading. And I, you know, as, as you said, um, I, I am hilariously over the top passionate about everything to do with the human body. Even the things that I, the things that I think are just bullshit and, uh, you know, are just like, just a lot of shysters, you know, out there promoting things that they can sell or package. Mm -hmm. I will still look into it and see if, if I can get value out of it. Cause if I can get value out of it, potentially I can bring that value to a client. And oftentimes the strange esoteric things can end up being the thing that's going to help a client out. Um, so I kept on reading, kept on studying, kept on doing this, kept on doing that. And then, you know, after, after a certain period of time, I was finally just like, you know what, I, th I think I'm going to do it. And I went and looked and I was like, okay, these are the three prerequisites. It was, um, I think about core conditioning, um, back training and program design. And I was like, cool. It's like less than a thousand dollars. I'll start there. So I bought them. And like three months later, they're like, Hey, we're, you know, opening up this thing now where, you know, you can pay for it in payments instead of paying it all at once. And I'm like, buy, like immediately just bought it. Like, no, <laughs> actually, no, the way that I ended up pulling the trigger, uh, is my, who I call my little brother was sitting right next to me. And I said, uh, should I do it? And he goes, yeah. And I was like, Hey, and clicked it. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's been one of the most beneficial things for me as a trainer. Um, but it's also been 
one of the most challenging things because it's required me to check a lot of my biases um, and really take a chance with with a lot of the more esoteric things. I think that's where you and I, you know, as as a team, kind of balance go, each other. Yeah, yeah. Because like, way. dude, the the way that you understand that shit is fucking unbelievable to me. Mm. Like. I feel like I have a really good grasp of this stuff and then you start talking and I'm I'm just kind of like <laughs> you know like the freaking gif of like Homer sliding back into the bushes yeah. like that's that's how I feel when you start talking about like uh, you know all, all these like mindfulness and yoga and all these different kinds of things so it's um to to go with a cliche it has kind of felt like a a thing of like you know east meets west mm -hmm. um yeah and then both of us kind of have you know, our, our, our hands in, in the other thing too. So, you know, it's like, you are still a trainer. You've spent so much time training. You've hopped on a stage, you've, you know, done all these different things. And then, you know, I'm meditating and I've done yoga and I'm practicing mindfulness and I do breath work. So it's like, there's this really, really cool crossover that I, I have wanted to start a podcast for four fucking years and I'm so excited yeah. that we're finally like <laughs> doing dude yeah. I'm, I'm so excited so yeah this is this is gonna be so fucking fun and for anybody listening um, you know to the three people who are listening um, <laughs> um, well, we're gonna keep this going you know if, if we get to episode 100 and there's still three people listening I don't care, you know, yeah, yeah this is this is um a fun way and a fun way to talk about health and fitness and I know at some point in time we'll be bringing cool people on and um, to anybody who is watching this right now maybe that's you mm -hmm. let us know if you want to hop on and you know we'd love to love to talk and shoot the shit but um, I suppose that's kind of my whole spiel I think that's my whole spiel I don't know is there anything you want me to go a little deeper in no you covered pretty much all the bases Hell yeah. yeah yeah I like talking <laughs> yeah. Once you, I guess once you really got immersed in your career as a trainer, what was like a kind of turning point that you were like, this is what I'm doing and why? Hmm. I'd say there's definitely a few kind of paradigm shifts uh, for me. Um, you know, I can think back on like all the clients that I've worked with throughout the years and, you know, the various things that I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do about that. Um, every single one of those was like this micro shift where it was like, how do I solve this? But <clears throat> I would say probably one of the biggest things was, I would say it's, it was either 2016 or 2017 when I started listening to a lot of podcasts and someone was like, yeah, all the, you know, insert every supplement that I was taking. Mm -hmm. um, they basically did a breakdown of it and they're like, here's, you know, here's the study they're citing and here's where it's being, you know, it, it, it like made, made out to be this huge thing that it really is not. Or, you know, here's the fine print in it where you find out, you know, the uh, dosage that they're using is like 10 times what you would, what, what's actually in a supplement and they're like, so, you know, it was the reason that you see things where it's, um, you know, a lot of pre-workouts do this where it's like, oh, you know, we've got this much super creatine and beta alanine and L-carnitine and da, da 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 And then it's like the studies that they cite in a lot of their marketing is just them using these, yes, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, it's like these massive quantities. And then you look at, you know, and they're just pixie dusting into everything. And I was like, so I don't need this shit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then I like cut down my pre-workout and then I cut down my amino acids and cut down my BCAAs and cut down my casein and I just kept taking all these supplements out of it and I was like I feel better mm -hmm. and I couldn't fucking believe that all these roided out people mm -hmm. on Instagram had lied to me I'm just yeah kidding. oh for sure yeah but it was, it was crazy so I think having having that veil kind of fall where I was like you don't actually need all this shit like mm -hmm. you know market marketing wins again at the end of the day but it's yeah, in a sense it, honestly a lot of those type of tools yeah. they really set people up for failure in the long run because they're giving you know this energy and whatnot to your system and yeah. 
you know, over time it gets used to that, so it kind of makes it hard to generate it yeah, itself. Absolutely. And so yeah. long term goals that kind of really can combat. Yeah. It, it ended up it ended up kind of handicapping me too a lot in the beginning because, you know, like I was saying, I uh, like I'm a, I'm 190 pounds right now, so I've since high school I've gained 50 pounds, and I mean I aside from the aspect of like I look at myself and I'm like I'm like oh my god I'm so skinny and like obviously in reality that's not entirely true but I remember being like oh well I am this way because I'm not taking this mm -hmm. so then it was always what's the new supplement what's the next thing instead of just looking at my program and my diet and like what it really came down to was my program was shit. Mm -hmm. I was not eating enough. Right. Uh, and, and even when I was eating enough, you know, it was always like synthetic garbage out of a plastic tub. And ugh, God, dude, like I, I remember the first time that I realized that, you know, um, protein farts is <laughs> not a good thing. Oh, That's God. not normal. No. Like <laughs> you, your body is not supposed to do that that often. And uh, you know, realizing that I had all these different kind, and this is this is more recent. Like realizing that I had all these different issues with my gut because of uh, you know because of the colitis that I had when I was a kid. That was just these long term lingering issues. Um, you know, having to face the fact that I can't just dump some shit in water, shake it up, and drink it. Uh, that I have to fucking work. Mm -hmm. I have to work really hard. I have to figure out what my body needs, what it doesn't work with, what what makes me feel better, you know, what is a crutch. And this is something that I always talk with a lot of clients about too, is like, because you get the supplement questions a lot because marketing marketing is very, very does effective. Its job, yeah, yeah, it, it does mm -hmm. its job. And you know, I, I, have, I have to, uh, I guess kind of be a voice of reason to, to clients a lot of the time because I, you know, I, I never had that voice of reason for me. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and it's not like there's, supplements aren't inherently bad. Like they have their place, you know. If, if you have a high quality protein powder and you know you're doing that, you know, every once in a while, great. You know, if you're, you know, if your vitamin D is really low because you never get out, like, take a vitamin D supplement, but it's, mm -hmm. if all of these things are just band-aids to deal with the fact that you have shitty habits and don't want to do the work, it's going to be temporary anyway. Because mm -hmm. exactly. at some point in time, you're not going to want to buy the protein anymore. You're not going to want to buy the supplements. You're not going to want to do this. And it's like, if you can just face the fact that the solution oftentimes, one, your, your body very often will tell you when something is not working, but, um, facing the fact that it's like hey you need to get out in the sun in the sun like you need to prepare some actual real food hey you need to look at your food quality um so that was a that was a huge huge shift for me um and then i think the other one was <clears throat> realizing that there is no magical diet and this is what i really really push with my clients now is that any diet that we do is temporary to gain information so that you have a constant forever map of you and your body mm -hmm. so you know is your is your eczema flaring up okay well these foods have caused that in the past you know uh is your stomach bloated are you having you know terrible bowel movements what is it that is causing this based on all these things we've tested in the past you know are you um like spiking up into the ceiling and then crashing like crazy like what is causing that so giving people all the tools and all the information to figure that out because god dude like but before we started working together and i i still do hold to this i mean i like i've always had the most self-defeating business uh you know business philosophy ever if you have to work with me forever I fucking failed. Mm -hmm. I didn't do my job right. You shouldn't have to have a trainer for the rest of your life. And, you know, I've had clients that have stuck around for years because they like the workouts and they like not having to think about it, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, the goal should be six months from now when I go talk to a client. Again, they shouldn't, you know, they should not be backsliding, and hopefully they're continuing to move forward and close to their goals. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, nothing Nothing is forever. Your body's always changing, the world's always changing, your goals are always changing. 
your diet's always going to change with it. Mm -hmm. The shit that worked 10 years ago isn't going to work today. Mm -hmm. Shit that worked two weeks ago isn't going to work today. Mm -hmm. Your body is different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and nutritional for sure standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a good question. I dig it. Yeah. What about how, what made you decide training? Like in the end when you're like, this is what I'm going to be doing for probably the rest of my life. Hmm. I think it was once the band broke up, <clears throat> um, I was starting to get a small handful of clients at the time. Um, and I was like, man, the coolest thing about playing music was that I got to have my own schedule. The coolest thing about being a trainer is that I get to have my own schedule. The coolest thing about playing music is I get to meet all these cool people and have a positive impact on life. The coolest thing about being a trainer is I get to meet all these cool people. And I was, so it was like, there were just these constant parallels between playing music and, and being a coach. And I mean, I'll call myself off for this. I'm a shitty employee. Mm -hmm. I don't, it, it's not that I don't like being told what to do. It's that like, I have to be sold on why I need to do the thing mm -hmm. that you tell me to do. And, yeah, for sure. um, you know, that can be as, as bad of a trait as it is good, but you know, I don't have to talk myself into why I need to do the things that I need to do. Like this business, is my fucking baby, mm -hmm. you know, it's, working with people is the coolest thing ever and you know to to have people come up to you years years later after you you know haven't seen them forever and they're still carrying on and doing well from the things that you taught them i mean it's it's like being a, a micro parent you know you get to have this really short window of time to change somebody's life and um you know i remember the first time a, a client really got significant results out of it and saw some really, really significant, um, you know, life gains, I suppose mm -hmm. you could call it you know, like physically. Um, but just everything. Cause the gym isn't just change your body. It's, it's change your fucking life, you know? And, mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I, I loved it. Like just everything about it, every fucking thing about it. I could literally, I could legitimately talk for like four hours. About yeah. It, so for sure. so um, we'll cut him off. That was yeah. <laughs> the end of today's episode. Yeah. But, hey guys, thanks for sticking around. Uh, uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll see what episode three holds. So uh, until next time guys, we'll see y'all later. <laughs>